solid geometry. Our next example of solid geometry will concern pyramids. You'll recall that a pyramid is anything that comes to a point on the top. In this pyramid, we're going to compare it to the original cube that we had. You'll see that the bases have exactly the same shape and dimension, and you can see that the heights are exactly the same. But clearly, the pyramid has far less volume than does the cube. So we're going to have to figure out how to make allowances for that. The way we do that is to say in a pyramid, the volume is equal to one-third of the area of the base times the height. For any pyramid, the, air, the volume is one-third the area of the base times the height. In our first example, we're going to consider a pyramid that has a rectangular base. The base is length times width. It's a rectangle. We know if we want the area of the base, we would just take the length times the width. And in a pyramid, we want one-third of the base times the height. So the volume of this pyramid will be one-third of the base, which is a rectangle, so it's length times width, times the height. The formula for this pyramid is one-third length times width times height. So when I'm figuring this out, I'll say the volume is equal to one-third of the length, which in this case happens to be seven feet, times the width, which in this case happens to be six feet, times the height, which is five feet. Now I can use what I know about multiplying with fractions to make my problem a little bit simpler and I can take 3 into 6 2 times. When I do that, I'm going to multiply 7 times 2, which is 14, times 5, which is 70. So my pyramid has 70 cubic feet of volume. I found the area of the base, multiplied it by a height, and multiplied it by one-third to get the volume of that particular pyramid. A cone is a special kind of pyramid. It's a pyramid with a circular base. We know it's a pyramid because it has a base and it comes to a point, so it operates exactly as other pyramids do. If I want to find the volume, I'm going to take one-third of the base times the height. In this case, the base is circular. I know the area of a circle is pi r squared. If I'm going to find the volume, I need to take one-third of the area of the base times the height, and that will give me the volume of a cone. I've taken one-third of the area of the base, which is a circle, so it's pi r squared, times the height. In the case of the cone that we have here, we'll take one-third pi times the radius, which is 6, squared, times the height, which is 10. I have one-third times pi, 6 squared is 36, times 10. I'm going to simplify my problem by reducing the fraction. I know that 3 goes into 36 12 times, and then I'll move to the calculator to do the calculations. I'm going to take 3.14 times 12 times 10. So the volume is 376.8. We have a volume of our cone of 376.8 cubic inches. Exactly as we did in the previous pyramid, we found the area of the base by taking pi r squared times the height times one-third to find the volume of the cone, and our cone gave us a volume of 376.8 cubic inches. Spheres. A sphere is a special kind of three-dimensional shape that operates under its own rules. It does not compare to prisms, pyramids, cones, or cylinders. It has its own formulas. You'll need to memorize the formula in order to use it properly. The formula for the volume of a sphere is volume equals four-thirds pi radius cubed. Four-thirds pi r cubed will give me the volume of a sphere. In this case, we have a sphere with a radius of 3 centimeters. So if I'm trying to find the volume, it would be 4 thirds times pi times 3 to the third power. If I can simplify this problem a little bit before I go to my calculator, it will be helpful. So I'll say this is 4 thirds times pi times 27. I do this so that I can simplify the fraction. I know that 27 is the same as 27 over 1, and I'll simplify the fraction by dividing right here. 3 goes into 27 9 times. Now I know my answer is equal to 4 times pi times 9. When I go to the calculator, that will be easier to input. So I'll put in 4 times 3.14, my approximation for pi, times 9, and I'll get a volume of 113.04. So this has a volume of 113.04, and I check my label and find it's cubic centimeters. Although that you have to memorize the formula for this particular figure, it's only one formula that you have to memorize, and it's a fairly easy one. The volume for a sphere 
is 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. This is a water tower, and inside it's probably round, and that water tower measures 30 feet in diameter. How many gallons of water can it hold? Let's do the math. You find that driving along the highways, you'll see many times these tall water towers. And why do they have these water towers? They're filled with water, and a pipe attached to the water tower that goes down in here, into the ground. And if you have a house somewhere where it's connected to it, this pipe goes in here, and any houses below the level of the water tower, the pressure of the water will give you pressure inside the house. If the house is above the water tower, then you need a pump. So let's figure out the volume of this water tower. is 30 feet in diameter. So volume equals 4 over 3 times pi times radius cubed. So the radius, the radius is of 30 feet equals 15 feet. So let's just plug in the numbers. So it would be volume equals 4 times 3.14, which is pi, times radius, which is 15 feet cubed, divided by 3. So let's plug in the numbers in the calculator. 15 times 15 times 15 times 3.14 times 4 divided by 3 equals 14,130. Volume equals 14,130 cubic feet. How many gallons does it hold? One cubic foot equals 7.48 gallons. So we just have to multiply that by 7.48 equals, and so the volume then in gallons equals 105692, or 105,692 gallons of water are in a 30-foot tower. That's how much volume, how many gallons of water a 30-foot diameter tower will hold. This is Moody Gardens in Galveston, Texas. It has three pyramids, Rainforest Pyramid, Discovery Pyramid, and the Aquarium Pyramid. The Aquarium Pyramid is made up of steel, concrete, and glass. It is 128 feet tall, and the base is 220 feet by 322 feet. For air conditioning, one needs to know what is the volume of air for this building. Let's figure out the volume. The volume of a pyramid, this pyramid is volume equals one-third times the length times the width times the height. So let's, the length is 322 feet. The width is 220, and the height of this pyramid is 128 feet. So let's just plug in the numbers. Volume equals, and we'll find the length, the width times the height. The length is 322 times the width, which is 220 times the height is 128, and divide that by 3. Let's go to the calculator and just plug in the numbers. 322 times 220 times 128 divided by 3 equals the answer, the volume, equals 3,022,000 oh, two, 
507 cubic feet. So for air conditioning purposes, if they're going to install air conditioning, they will know the volume of air in that pyramid. Now to give you an idea of the size of this pyramid, let's just figure out the area of the base. That just that will be 220 times and area is length times width times 322 equals equals 70,840 square feet. So the area of the base equals 70,840 square feet. Now one acre equals 43,000. 560 feet, square feet, I should say. So all we have to do is divide that number, divide this by 43,560 equals, so the area equals 1.626 acres. So it's a little bit larger than one and a half acres. So that gives you a little idea of the size of the base of this pyramid. And by using this formula, you can find the total volume of air, which is required when you have to determine how much air conditioning you need to air condition a building like this. Of course, there's other factors that if it's glass and concrete and the heat of the outside air, all these things are factored in in determining air conditioning power that is required. Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.